Hey, Billy from Permapastures Farm. We're gonna do something today that's probably gonna save you a lot of money, especially in these times. If you've seen the price of hay out there, you know that to supply yourself hay for this upcoming winter is gonna cost you a fortune. We're gonna show you a way around that today. The money saver we're gonna to bring to you today is called tree hay. Now, some of you may have never heard of it, some of you have. We can use the trees that I'm walking by right now, even that bomb looking peach up here. Look, let's go all the way back and talk about how long this has been used and how it's been forgotten. Some of the earliest examples that we have goes all the way back to when Julius Caesar was conquering places like Gaul, modern day France, and a number of other places. In fact, the very trees that were coppiced, meaning that were chopped off to the ground or limbs were taken off, are still thriving today in places all over Scotland, England, basically anywhere that the Romans had a footprint because they were using it at a time in the winter when everybody else wasn't. So that's one of the earliest examples and we're reasonably sure that it goes all the way back to the Greeks, the Medo-Persian Empire, probably all the way back to the Babylonians and probably even in the United States of amnesia. All right, we're gonna get into the trees that you should or shouldn't deal with. And of course, we're gonna bring in our consummate expert. She's never gonna tell you that, but she really is awesome at this stuff. So uh, reluctantly, she's here. But anyway, um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about what we should and shouldn't use. So what is it? So wild cherry is one of the trees you should definitely stay away from. Black locust. It depends on who you ask, but if you pay attention to the sheep, they will eat a little bit of it and then they'll leave it. So maybe throw in just a little bit of it for because a lot of things that are medicinal are toxic at higher quantities. So the sheep know what's medicinal and what's toxic. So you can throw in a little bit. If they eat it, fine. If they don't, that's fine too. Now she's talking sheep, but this really works with any kind of room in it. I mean, they, they were using it for horses back in the old days. I mean, horses, cows, you name it. Anything that eats grass, essentially, they were doing this for. So what are some of the other varieties? So any of your hardwoods, your oaks, your maples, hickories, um, those are great. Your oaks especially have tannins that will help with parasites. There's a lot of nutrition in trees that you're not gonna get in, in just straight grass. Let me just throw this in there also. Something else that is of profound value these days, when you look at all these other places where people are spraying all kinds of chemicals, nine times out of 10, they're putting them on the ground. Well, even if you did, the chances of it bioaccumulating in these leaves, like for example, this black locust, it's going through a massive filter system before it ever got here. So as far as better than organic, the stuff's pretty hard to beat. Am I wrong? No, yeah. We're in an area that we largely cleared and ran animals through a while ago. We didn't come back and do anything to it. And um, some of the things that we pruned and knocked down are just plain cut. We're coming back and this is one of them. So Michelle, briefly, why don't you tell them what even got us into this space? Why we even started doing it? Okay, so the only reason, well, the reason we started, we had we had bought land in Texas and it was filled with, it was mostly just briars, trees. It was very thick. You couldn't even get back into a lot of parts of it. So how this all started is we just started thinning out and cutting the, the trees and we would feed it to the sheep. So... And they loved it. They absolutely loved it. And even in the winter time in Texas, a lot of the trees were still vegetative. So I could go out, clear an area, drag it back for the sheep, and they absolutely loved it. You can grow trees specifically for fodder. There's some people that sell fodder trees. You plant them and then you coppice or pollard them after they grow. And that's what happened here. You have this um, maple, maple that was cut down and then you have all these shoots growing from it. Yeah, that's definitely one way you can go to it. So we'll gather all this up, but let's first talk about what little you need in terms of tools. Right here, we got some loppers, we got some pruners, and then should you require it, I got a folding saw. So literally I can pretty much put most of this in my pocket and drive on. All right, so I got some hemp right here, some little twine, and it's really this simple. I'm just gonna tie it up a little bit, 
I mean, it can even be a little bit loose. And then in the end of it, what I normally do is put an overhand in one of the running ends of the string. So let, let it go for a moment. So as I'm hanging it up in the barn or wherever we put it, all those juices and everything are running downhill. And you can, and you got that little loop right there that you can use to hang on a nail or whatever else you got in the barn. So this is typically how we do it. What do we got here, honey? So I'm not sure what variety this is, but you can still, I know it's not cherry, so you could still do it. And the cool thing is when you're doing a lot of this stuff, these guys, look, I've never seen an animal kill itself when it had availability of things it could eat. So just don't give it one thing. This is just a part of the smorgasbord. What do we got? Uh, this is some sort of oak. So we're gonna take this. Look, I got a handful of the one we got. I'm just gonna clip it here. Don't even need the loppers and I can leave some back. You see, I didn't take it all. And as we go through here, y'all, just keep in mind, if you've already run your animals through, use your grazer's eye and pay attention to what they're eating. You may not know what it is, but they do. So if you've seen them eating it, maybe it's a pretty good candidate for some tree head. Okay, so we got it back to the porch and we got a number of other things, but this is just one. We got another bundle down here and look, it's really this simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. If you got a barn, you can hang it there. But if you got a porch, preferably covered, you can hang it there. So Michelle's just gonna kind of hold it there for me. I put a loop in it because I was planning on putting it in the barn, but if you don't, no big deal. We got a string, a piece of twine that's already up here right now. So I'll just do one of those old sapper knots called a round turn with two half hitches. And we will just let it go right here. There it is, it's doing its thing there. So also remember, this doesn't, it's not like regular hay where it has to be completely dry. This can get a little rain on it and it'll be fine. So what are the benefits, Michelle, of this compared to regular conventional hay? Why would somebody even wanna go through the trouble let me just put this one out before she answers. Most of us, if you haven't been to the grocery store, we got more time than money these days, am I wrong? Right, so if you've got some tree, especially if you've got trees on your property that need to be cleared, this is one thing you can do with them and feed your animals at the same time. Nutrition, like I said before, there are there is so much nutrition in trees that you're not gonna get from just straight hay. The, the cost, I mean, that's another, that's another thing. Hay is pretty expensive. And also you're keeping the fertility on your land. So you're harvesting the trees and you're recycling it through your ruminants. And it could be the problem is the solution. Let's say you have unwanted trees, trees that you can't seem to get rid of. A lot of people hate autumn olive, but I'll tell you what, some sheep will do some serious damage on it. But there's other things that we can hang as well. Like one of the examples, and this one's already kind of halfway dried. Um, same thing. What do we got here, honey? So this is comfrey that we've dried that we also make, uh, I guess, comfrey hay. We just harvest our leaves throughout the growing season and uh, either lay them down or hang them up and just let them dry. And that'll supplement. There's a lot of nutrition in comfrey, uh, high protein. You can feed that during the winter as well. And don't forget, hey, this this tonight, the uh, sale's gonna end. Well, it's not a sale, it's the promotion that we were doing where we're adding in the Comfrey Crown with any Comfrey order. So that's gonna end at midnight tonight. But look, y'all, this is the beauty of it. Look, we don't just talk about this stuff. This is actually what we do. It's saving us a pile of money. We're adding in tons of nutrition for our animals. And we're doing it at a time in America where everybody could afford to save a few more bucks. And if you doubt what we're saying, watch what we're gonna do out here in a minute. We're gonna show you in real time how these sheep, what they prefer, we'll just let them be the deciding judge on what they want more. Is it tree hay or is it green grass? Let's go find out. All right, here's another way that people choose to do it, but it's not technically tree hay. When we talk about tree hay, we're talking about stuff you're gonna chop and obviously put up. But all the areas that we've coppiced trees out of here, because this is one of the silvopasture areas that we're rejuvenating because there's way too much over here. Well, this maple is a prime example of what people do. If you get over here and take a look, we coppice this one plumb down to the ground. Now you could go ahead and chop this and hang it like you would regular tree hay, or you could do option B, which is what a lot of folks do. We got our sheep down there. And of course they're antsy to get out. 
And we can leave that here for them. Over there, we got the same thing going. And then down here, we got a poplar. And then this is what I'm gonna show you. I pull it off to the side, you can see that stump right there. And so what's happening is that some trees, now you can only do this so many times with certain types of trees. The nitrogen fixtures, you can do it, it seems like indefinitely. So we're gonna let those sheepies out and we're gonna see what they are gonna do. This is the other tree inside this paddock. That's sassafras. And of course, they're going nuts on that. The maple. And over here, once again, the uh, poplar. And if you look in this paddock, this is part of the, this is, isn't exactly the best part of it. But the first thing they're going after is that tree hay. And this is what a lot of us forget in here. Now we also have part of the pasture over there that they're gonna work on. But this is what they want first. So definitely put this in your arsenal, especially these days. All right, so naturally the question is gonna come up, how much do I need? Now, when it comes to things like what you see here, like this comfrey, I mean, good night, y'all. We, we, despite the fact that we have tons of it, we can't grow enough of this because we use it and we feed it like nothing. We feed it fresh. And then we, of course, make the comfrey hay out of it. So we use it all year long. So Michelle, what, would you, what advice would you give somebody when they're trying to determine um, and they're thinking, okay, this is a mountain of work. What advice would you give somebody in terms of how much they would need for what they're growing, whether it's sheep, cows, so horses, I, you name it? When I was doing research on tree hay, this was when we lived here, there was a guy, and I don't remember, I think it was a YouTube video. Um, he said that during the months of June, July, August, he would go out and spend one to two hours every day collecting tree hay for his flock, which was a decent sized flock, maybe, I think it was like 20 maybe. So that would give him enough to feed tree hay throughout the winter time. Now, if you're looking to just supplement, obviously you don't have to do that much, but if you're looking to replace, you that's probably more representative of what you should do. If you're just looking to supplement, you could go out once a week maybe and collect tree hay. And, and supplement through the winter. Let me also say that we're bringing to bear a bunch of different ideas from a bunch of different people through the winter. Because right now it's, it's August, it's the middle of August, but you gotta be thinking this far ahead. Now, some of those ideas are, instead of just relying solely on tree hay, we stockpile forage using some of the methods we learned from Jim Garris. Also, a lot of the methods we get from uh, the great Greg Judy. A lot of those things, a lot of those methods and techniques we bring to bear in addition to the tree hay. So take the right dog to the hunt or take multiple dogs to the hunt, especially in these times where we don't know what might happen in terms of prices from day to day. So instead of instead of hearkening back to the fear monger saying, oh, this the sky is falling and all this other stuff, put foot to butt and start doing the things right now that you know that can keep you, your family, your flock, your herd, whatever the case may be, keep those things kicking all the way through no matter the times that we're going through. Am I wrong? Nope. You just heard it from the homestead honey, y'all. I hope this was a blessing to a number of you out there that are stressing about what you're gonna do, how you're gonna buy this highfalutin, high-priced hay that's been sprayed with everything that you don't want in your animals or yourself. This is one of the many solutions we bring to bear to get all this stuff done now. Be sure, check out Greg Judy's YouTube channel. Wealth of knowledge over there. Check out uh, Kick the Hay Habit by Jim Garrish. Bunch of other resources, and one of them being our website, which you can find, obviously, at the website. If you need anything else down below, we got it there. Till next time, this is Billy and the Homestead Honey from Perma Pastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. And right here's part of it, y'all. We'll see you next time.